I would like to welcome everybody to our Thursday, February 20th, 2020 regular board meeting. Uh, the Norwood City School District Board of Education follows a bi-monthly meeting schedule. The first meeting of the month is called our committee meeting. At this meeting, we discuss fully our agenda for the board meeting to be held the third Thursday of each month. Um, as board members, we encourage you to attend, watch, and listen to our committee discussion, which results in action at the board meetings, which is tonight. For full disclosure, our committee meetings and board meetings are always announced, video and audio taped, as well as posted to our webpage for your view. All of our meetings are public and visitors are always welcome. Please call the roll. Mr. Atwood. Present. Mrs. Cole. Present. Ms. Ballard. Present. Mrs. Raber. Present. Mrs. Rarica. Present. All right, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance, Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, Julie. All right, now we're going to move on to item 1.04 in our agenda, which is the adoption of tonight's agenda. May I have a motion to adopt the agenda, or are there any changes that need to be made at this time? A motion to adopt the agenda is written. I'll second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Raver? Yes. Mrs. Rarica? Yes. Now that we've adopted our agenda, we're going to move on to 1.05, which is the approval of the minutes from our regular meeting held on January 16th, 2020. And then as well as the approval of the minutes from our committee meeting held on February 11th, 2020. May I have a motion to approve those minutes? All motion. All second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Raper? Yes. Mrs. Rarica? Yes. Fantastic. Now we're going to move on to section 2.01. This is our presentation section. And first up, we have the Norwood Middle School. Good evening, my name is Joe Miller. I'm the principal at Norwood Middle School. Um, it's my great pleasure to introduce one of the most dedicated, hardest working group of young people I've had the pleasure of working with, Norwood Middle School Student Council. We, uh, we at the middle school, we've had, come on on. Come on up. We've had uh, 10 young folks that have stepped forward to be on our student council, which is spectacular. They, they all could not be here tonight, but they're, we're very well represented. And I'm certain that this group of young people, uh, we're going to be eager to see the things that they're doing currently in the middle school for sure, but uh, all the things that they will continue to do in the future. So have that. Um, like he just said, we are student council. Um, and the advisor is Ms. Kang. So, I am Nadia Salyers, I am President of Student Council. I am Rita Alcantara and I am Vice President. And we help conduct monthly Student Council meetings. So we have Student Council meetings every month or every couple weeks and we always talk about how we can make um, our community and school a better place. We also team lead building activities, that is we go to Ms. Kane's class to ask her what we should help around the school, or Ms. Goodfriend, if she needs any help or any teacher. We also oversee the officers. So we're all kind of, we all work together. We are, there's not a bunch of ranks and stuff. We all just are one community. Organized student council meetups outside of school. We would go hang out, meeting, to organize plans for another meeting or like for tomorrow we have a dance 
So we will organize the ideas and the plans to organize the uh, decorations and stuff. We welcomed and greeted guests at the 2020 Ohio Teacher of the Year ceremony, including Ohio Superintendent of Public Instruction, Palo Di Muria, the Mayor of Norwood, Mr. Thomas Williams, Senator Cecil Thomas, Norwood Board of Education, and school board members. And now we're gonna have Nadia Merriweather come and she is the Counseling Office Liaison. Hi, I meet quarterly with our counselor, Mrs. Goodfriend, to see what we can do to help our students around the Norwood Middle School. I collaborate in planning school-wide prevention programs. And I also, right now, I'm also, <laughs> right now, I'm writing letters to companies that might be interested in donating items for our students who need hygiene products. We're calling it our hygiene pantry that students all over the school can use if they need it. Um, I'm also getting, we're getting inside the pantry there will be feminine products, shampoo, breakfast bars, snacks, canned food, and other items that will help build our secret personal care pantry. Now I have to pass it on to our service chair, Tyler Lane. Hello, my name is Tyler Lampy and I am the service chair of Norwood Middle School. I help plan school-wide or community-wide service projects each quarter and I am, as of the moment, putting together a Norwood's Got Talent and that is going to be a talent show for the Norwood Middle School this spring and, well, sorry, um, we also helped put together sock donations for Bethany House, and we worked with the development director, Deanna Powell, to determine needs of women and children staying at one of the largest shelters in Cincinnati. Um, we are working on many projects, but some of our projects is the Bethany House Services, like Tyler just mentioned. We. Um, we had students bring in socks and so that we donated them to the Bethany House Services for women and children. Um, we are doing a pay it forward month of kindness. We also doing our Norwood's Got Talent and like Nadia said, our personal care pantry. Um, Bethany House Services provides housing, education and assistance to homeless families in the greater Cincinnati area, including Northern Kentucky and Southeastern Indiana. The holistic services, including emergency shelter, housing, comprehensive case management, post-shelter support, and permanent affordable rental housing, addresses a family's current needs and seek, and seek to prevent repeat of episodes of homelessness. The mission for Bethany Health Services empowers homeless and at-risk families with a solution to achieve housing stability and long-term self-sufficiency. We are also doing a month of kindness, uh, February 2020. It is to encourage every student, teacher, and staff member at Norwood, Norwood Middle School to look out for opportunities to help each person, be willing to help a person that you don't know, give freely without expecting anything in return. Any small accounts. Um, there are lots of members of the 2000 to 2020 student health representatives. We have Rita Alcantara, we have Lillian Duvault, we have Leandre Heights, Madison Hensley, Tyler Lampy, Olivia Lewis, Nadia Merriweather, Olivia Nelson, Kayla Rice, Nico Ryan, Nadia Salyers, Riley Stanley, and our advisor, Ms. Kang. And here are some moments of us having some fun, um, some in school and out of school time that we spent together. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Thank you so much for letting us know what's going on with the Middle School Student Council. Those are fantastic ideas and, and activities that they're doing. Next, we're going to move on to item 2.02, .02, 
which is our superintendent ceremonial presentation. So later in tonight's agenda, we're going to be um, officially voting on a permanent superintendent status for Mary Ronan. So while we have a bunch of people in the audience before we do the Rising Stars, we thought it would be appropriate to kind of present Mary with a little token of gratitude and a welcome to our district on not an interim basis. Thank you. So, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Oh my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> I guess I I am just very, very excited to be part of the North City School District. I want to thank the Board of Education for having confidence in me. I'm happy to be working with the board, all the great students, staff, and alumni of Norwood City Schools. You have made me feel so at home these past five months. This is such a warm, warm, welcoming community. And I just, I'm so impressed with the pride that everyone has in being part of Norwood. And everyone is always looking for ways to make the city and the school district better. I'm just delighted to be working with the Board of Education to bring in additional resources and engage parents like all of you here tonight in their children's education because if children aren't successful, we aren't successful. I've seen so many great students here tonight, our rising stars, our, our student council, us students, and I just know the amazing, amazing potential our children have. So no matter what's happening with the state mandates and unstable funding, we have 1,800 students here in Norwood City Schools, and they deserve the very, very best that we can give them. So I promise to work towards giving them what they need so that they become the next leaders here in the Norwood City School District. So again, thank you for appointing me to be superintendent at Norwood City Schools, and thank you, everyone. Thank you for the beautiful planner. <laughs> Thank you to Greens Floral up on Montgomery. They did a beautiful job. <laughs> Support local. <laughs> All right. Next, we'll continue on with the presentation of our student <clears throat> rising stars. Uh, we will start our Rising Stars this evening with the high school. Norwood's High School's Rising Star students for February are Hannah Brandenburg and Dylan Blake. <laughs> Hannah Brandenburg is a sophomore in the class of 2022. Hannah was nominated by her teacher, Miss Leslie Hathaway. Miss Hathaway stated, Hannah is an amazing student I have had the pleasure of teaching honors biology to. She has a schedule loaded with honor level courses and is excelling in all of them. She is always quick with a smile and has a great attitude. Her manners are impeccable and she has a level of maturity not often seen among sophomores. I truly enjoy spending class time with her. She is simply wonderful. Hannah has already established herself in both academic studies and her extracurricular activities. She is a member of the NHS marching band where she plays clarinet. Hannah also loves photography, and she recently earned recognition as one of the three students for her digital photography piece, Old Town Flower, in the Scholastics Regional Art Competition. Her work is currently on display at the Art Academy of Cincinnati. She plans on attending college after graduation, focusing on psychology. Science classes are her favorite courses at Norwood High School. Hannah has stated her favorite part of being a Norwood High School student is how easy it is to make friends. Students like Hannah make Norwood City Schools incredible. <laughs> Dylan Blake is a sophomore in the class of 2022. Dylan was nominated by his, by his teacher, Miss Bess Franklin. Miss Franklin stated Dylan is actively involved in various school activities such as wrestling, football, captain's council, and takes honors courses. He is seen as a leader and promotes positivity among his peers, which is shown 
daily in our school. Dylan takes his academics seriously and strives to do his best in his classes. His attendance record is near perfect and he consistently participates in classroom discussion to better his understanding. When his classmates need help or does not understand a concept, Dylan tries his best to help them and make them feel valued and included in the classroom. Overall, Dylan shows pride in his self-growth and building valuable relationships with others. He chooses to better himself with academics and chooses to better others and the community by the kindness and compassion he continuously shows. After graduation, Dylan is considering enlisting in the Marines. His favorite part of being a student at Norwood High School are the close relationships he has been able to form. He thinks the people at Norwood High School are great, both students uh, as friends and teachers as positive uh, mentors. It is students like Dylan that make Norwood City Schools incredible. Norwood Middle School Rising Star students for February are Nina McKenzie and Dixie Durbin. <laughs> Nina exhibits the qualities of a rising star at Norwood Middle School. Nina is an excellent student. She demonstrates a strong work ethic in and out of the class, often earning the highest grade on assignments and tests in her class. Nina is eager to participate in class and willing to help her peers. Nina leads by example by staying on task and interacting with peers in a positive manner. These attributes make Nina an obvious choice for Norwood Middle School Rising Star. It is students like Nina that make Norwood City Schools incredible. <laughs> Dixie Durbin is a hardworking student. Her perseverance and positive attitude is impressive. Dixie always puts forth her best effort and takes ownership and responsibility for learning. Uh, bringing tons of energy to the classroom con conversations and always dedicated extra time into work as needed. Dixie has a positive attitude and never gives up. Dixie is also a kind and compassionate classmate who is always there to help a friend. She is a star. It is students like Dixie that make Norwood City Schools incredible. Chartsburg Elementary and Primary uh, School's Rising Star students for February are Caleb Goldsmith and Aubrey Bentz. <laughs> Aubrey Bentz has such a calm and sweet disposition. She is a friend to all and an excellent role model for her peers. During class, Aubrey gets right on task and is focused and conscientious while doing her work. Aubrey cares so much about her grades and learning. Aubrey enjoys art and math, although she enjoys all of the subjects she studies at school. When Aubrey uh, Benz is not at school, she enjoys playing soccer and doing artwork. She likes to spend time cooking with her mom and baking with her dad. Aubrey likes watching movies and going to the park or playing basketball with her two brothers. Aubrey's strong work ethic comes from her supportive home. Aubrey has chores to do at home. She helps with cleaning and dusting. We are honored to nominate Aubrey as a rising star. We have no doubt that Aubrey will always shine. It is students like Aubrey that make Norwood City Schools incredible. <laughs> Caleb Goldsmith has such a positive presence. He comes to class each day ready to learn with a smile on his face. Caleb is such a great role model for his peers. He sets high standards for himself and persists at the task at hand until it is finished per perfectly. Caleb's favorite subject is math. When not at school, Caleb likes to play video games and he hopes to be a video streamer someday. <laughs> Caleb, Caleb likes cute. action and science fiction movies. Caleb and his family enjoy baking, cooking, going to movies, and playing board games together. Caleb has chores to do at home and he is responsible for doing the dishes, cleaning his room, and cleaning the living, living room. It is our pleasure to nominate Caleb as a star. We are confident that Caleb will do well with whatever path he chooses to take in life. Caleb will always shine. <laughs> Students like Caleb make Norwood City Schools incredible. <laughs> Norwood View Elementary Rising Star Students for February. For February, sorry. Alea Mike and Kalia Satterway. First grade teachers at Norwood View are proud to nominate Alea as a rising star student for the month of February. Mm -hmm. She has a very comfortable, confident way of talking with both adults and peers. Each day, Alea comes to school ready to learn. 
If she is not sure about something happening in the classroom, she will always ask a question right away to clarify directions or to be sure she is doing something right instead of simply getting work done. Alea seeks to understand the work she is doing, whether it is difficult reading passage, asking about new vocabulary words, or solving a new type of math problem. Because Alea works so hard each day, she has proven herself to be a curious learner, sure to master any obstacle that may be ahead. Once Alea has mastered a skill, she is happy, even eager, to help other students around her. She is a neat, organized student. These traits also set her up for success. Alea is one to watch, and it is students like Alea that make Norwood City Schools incredible. <laughs> the special teachers at Norwood View Elementary are proud to nominate second grader Kalia Satterwhite for, her, for a February 2020 Rising Star Award. She always walks in the front door and starts her day with a smile on her face. Kalia smiles so much and so often she has even earned the nickname Smiley. She is a bubbly young lady whose positive creative spirit help her excel in all areas. Kalia plays hard and fair in gym and is always there to add an encouraging and word of, or helpful hand. She sings her heart out in music and mastering rhythms. In art, Kalia always puts a unique spin on her drawings and paintings to give them real visual flair. Kalea is a delight to have in class. She is kind, considerate, and a friend to anyone she meets. We see her teachers as truly appreciative to have her here at Norwood View. Students like Kalea make Norwood City Schools incredible. <laughs> Williams Avenue Elementary School's Rising Star students for February are Autumn Carter and Reese Lehu. The Williams Avenue Elementary Specialist team of Miss Dilly, Mr. Dole, and Mr. Wake are happy to nominate Autumn Carter for the Rising Star Award. Autumn is a fourth grader here at Williams who loves reading in school and would like to be a football player when she grows up. We, would, <laughs> we could fill a book with all the things that make Autumn incredible, but here are just a few. Autumn's positive attitude and happy smile are always on full display. She constantly gives maximum effort and puts her best foot forward. Autumn is always happy to help in any way that she can. She is patient, kind, and a real boost to her classmates and everyone around her. It gives us great pleasure to name Autumn Carter one of our rising stars. It is students like Autumn that make Norwood City Schools incredible. <laughs> Reese Lehu is a kindergarten rising star for the month of February. The kindergarten team thinks she is incredible because she is an amazing role model for her peers. She completes the tasks that teachers ask her to do to the best of her ability. Reese has a great attitude when it comes to all parts of the day. She is a PACS leader and is super friendly to staff and students alike and includes all her peers in work and play. Her favorite part of school is coloring. Her favorite color is blue and she really likes zebras. When she grows up, she wants to be a police officer. It is students like Reese that make Norwood City Schools incredible. So now we're going to do a little photo opportunity. Yeah, don't put your face. Just a little bit. 
week. Okay, are we ready? One, two, three. I'm going to do another one. One, two, three. Perfect. Okay, now I'm friends and you get one. Okay, so stay around, meet me out the wall. Alright, so everybody, the kids and families are gonna go outside and there's gonna be more photos taken out in the lobby. All right, I think yeah, so. Are you ready? So you we're going to move on to section three, which is the education committee report, which is Alice Rarica and Amber Bedford. That's me. Okay, our first thing is the Norwood High School course of study, and they have some new classes, and I'm going to tell you what they are. Uh, where's the scroller? Go down. There we go. Yeah. So we have a new English lab for 10th graders, an AP English language, mostly for 11th graders it says, and a college credit plus English 101 and 102 through Cincinnati State. Then in social studies we have a new speech and debate class. Uh, in physical education, a physical education 2 slash competitive games and also a physical fitness slash nutrition too. And we also have a work study class. Do you want me to explain work study? If you want to. Um, so they are going to have uh, time, half the day the students will come to school either in the morning or in the afternoon. And the other part of the day, they will go get a job and that will be monitored, um, the, there will be a teacher who checks in with the employer, visits the student at work, has a whole list of things that the student needs to accomplish, like uh, customer service skills or whatever skills are in that particular job. And uh, they will monitor everything. Um, the kids will not be running off willy-nilly to jobs. May I explain that one a little bit? Awesome, go for it, Amber. So with the work-study program, it works very similar to the credentialing that is given out in, uh, like for example, at Great Oaks, we have credits that a person can earn that will show up on their graduation transcript and show that they have acquired certain skills that will make them viable to employers in the future. Not every student is a great book learner, but they're great with hands-on, one-on-one learning, and, and getting out to do something. Not every child is meant to sit in a classroom the entire day. A work-study program allows them to have a little bit more flexibility in their time and flexibility with their learning style that meets their needs. They'll also come out with those credentials that will make them job-ready, viable, and effective members in the community when they graduate. Awesome. So because we follow the consent order agenda style, you can continue on with the other three items in your section and we'll vote on, on all of them at once. Okay. Uh, the next thing is a middle school softball team proposal. Um, they are going, they proposing a softball team for the middle school, which does not currently have one. Um, it includes $809 for equipment and uniforms. $70 per game for umpires, um, some supplemental contracts assigned to middle school softball coaches, uh, which we already have listed, right? It's just we aren't currently using them, and now we're going to use them. Um, and it will all be paid through the high school softball and general athletics account um, and some fundraising. And they will play at the high school softball field or at Waterworks Park. They had some meetings to gauge interest. 19 students um, expressed desire to do it. And so they think that this will be a great opportunity to start a team. Next is the Cincinnati State College Credit Plus Partnership. Um, you heard me say that we have a new English 101 and 102 for the College Credit Plus. Um, there's a lot of information here. 
you want to abbreviate that one? You can summarize it. We discussed it at our yep. committee meeting. Right. So Cincinnati State is coming in to do College Credit Plus. Uh, um, the kids can get college credit during high school for taking these college credit classes. Uh, they can go to the um, campus at Cincinnati State and they have three campuses to take the class. They can take it online or they can take it here at school and they do have two teachers that Cincinnati State has approved of to teach the college credit classes. Um, in the high school so they don't need to go anywhere to take these classes and so so far we have the two English classes and I do believe we are going to build on that um, and it's $41 and change per, for, credit. per credit hour which is a steal because I know even uh, 20 years ago I paid way more than that <laughs> and that will be paid by the school district I just found out before I walked in here not by parents so it's free college credit for yeah. high school students. Mm -hmm. Right? That's super exciting. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to push my children to do that. Save us some money. Okay, next. Approval of field trips. Let's get to them right here. Uh, two for Shelter Week Camp. Uh, Norwood Middle School and High School going to um, London, Kentucky. Is this for the oh for the bike for the bike? Um, there are two of them. The bike field trip. Oh, there's two and there's two of them. Yep. Um, and that's the bike club. That's an after school program where they fix bikes and then they go on this trip and ride the bikes. And I saw it last year and it was lovely on Facebook and it, it looked really really neat and that's all our things all right can I have a motion for the approval of items 3.01 through 3.04 I'll oh. motion I'll second any discussion so I, I just want to just make one comment so I am very very excited about the middle school softball team. I think this is absolutely fantastic. And I think this is one thing where the girls are absolutely showing up the boys. I think the boys have to get on it if they want a middle school boys baseball team. So I, I think this is great. So uh, I'm really excited about this. And you know, through our teacher agreement that we have with the union, we already have the positions in place. Mm -hmm. So we're not creating new positions for these coaches. We're just filling existing slots so so this is very easy for us to do and we already have the stipend positions for the boys baseball team if there's enough interest with those middle school kids to, to put that together so we already have the infrastructure in place for that does it have to be boys if they want to play baseball can girls sign up well absolutely well then there you go girls <laughs> step it up make both happen yeah get it there done <laughs> there's enough for both teams yeah and boys join softball whatever you want to do but we have the money set aside for both teams to exist. If you are interested, come over and talk to our wonderful athletic director and let him know you want to do it. Any other discussion? I'm really excited about the College Credit Plus Plus and the work study stuff. Mm -hmm. We're going to be able to serve a lot more kids in a lot more ways. It's great. And motivate kids who aren't motivated in school. Probably by both of those things. Call the roll, please. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Raper? Yes. Mrs. Rare? Yes. All right, now we're going to move on to section number four, personnel. And normally we ask that you start this off, but I am going to lead this one. Ha <laughs> ha. So the first item on our agenda is the approval of the resolution to enter into a contract with Mary Ronan as our superintendent. And so I am going to read the resolution and then we're going to vote and discuss on it or discuss and then vote on it. So the Board of Education of the Norwood City School District, Hamilton County, Ohio, 
met on February 20th, 2020 at the Board of Education meeting at 2020 Sherman <laughs> Avenue. 2020, 2020. And Mr. Atwood moved for the adoption of the following resolution. Whereas as of October 5th, 2019, there existed a vacancy in the Office of Superintendent for the district. And whereas it is in the best interest of the district and its students, families, staff, and administration to foster a stable environment by the hiring of a superintendent in advance of the new school year. And whereas Mary Ronan is licensed by the state of Ohio to occupy the office of superintendent and otherwise possesses outstanding qualifications for the office. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Education for the Norwood City Schools District that the board hereby appoints Mary Ronan as the superintendent of the Norwood City School District pursuant to the terms and conditions set forth in Exhibit A, effective March 1st, 2020. The board president and treasurer are hereby authorized and directed to execute the contract with Mary Ronan attached in Exhibit A hereto. It is found and determined that all formal action of this Board of Education concerning or related to the adoption of this resolution was adopted in an open meeting of this board and all deliberations of this board that resulted in such formal action were adopted in meetings open to the public in compliance with all applicable requirements of the Ohio Revised Code. So I am motioning that we approve this resolution. I'll second. We have a second. Is there any discussion? I'm really happy and Mary's really wonderful and I don't have any good words right now, but <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Somebody else say something more eloquent. <laughs> I was going to say, I wrote a few things down, so oh, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> I, uh, I tend to do better if I make notes of what I want to say, but um, I know that Mrs. Ronan is probably very tired of hearing me say how thrilled I was that we're finally able to take the word interim off of her title. Um, so I'm going to say it again. Mary, I'm glad you're officially ours. Thank you. Um, thank you for caring enough about us to come out of retirement. Um, I want the public to know what an incredible superintendent Mrs. Ronan was before she came to us and what, a, and what an incredible interim superintendent she has been for the last several months. And I'm certain she will continue to be an incredible superintendent as she works with us for the next few years. So at minimum, maybe we can talk you out of that. <laughs> Retirement, um, Retirement schmirement. So Mrs. Ronan came to us with a wealth of knowledge and experience like no other. Her impact can already be felt here in Norwood. While she is not from Norwood, she definitely gets us and she appreciates us for who we are. I'm confident she's exactly what our district needs at this time. And I'm excited about her vision for us and I look forward to working with her to make Norwood City School District even more wonderful than it already is. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I do have some comments as well. Um, first, I wanna say um, in my conversations with individuals from all across the state, that has some sort of vested interest in, in the educational realm. One of the first questions they ask when we introduce each other and they find out that I'm from Norwood, one of the first questions I'm often asked is, how did you guys get Mary Ronan to come out of retirement? <laughs> and then the second thing that has been most common in my conversations is that, um, is that you have this persona that is going to lead this district into a much better place and I don't know if I'm quite saying it correctly so I may try to rephrase that a little bit but the, the gist of the matter is 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 that when it's all said and done and and you finally decide to move on to whatever challenges await you in the future um, I truly believe you're going to leave this in a much 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 better place because of your impact. So, 
Thank you so much again. Thank you for your confidence in me to appoint me superintendent. I love Norwood and I will work very, very hard for the 1800 students and their families here in Norwood City Schools. I am just delighted to be here. Thank you so much. You're a fabulous board to work with. You're so concerned. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better board. You're always thinking of the children, what's best for them. And that's what makes you so wonderful to work with. And I think we would be remiss if we didn't mention the efforts of HESC when we needed an, a superintendent, they came to us and brought you and encouraged you to look at our school and, and look at our needs and you didn't hesitate one bit. Um, so, you know, thank you to them for their dutiful search. Uh, all of five minutes it took, I swear, to get you on board. And, but I am so grateful for them and their energy to, uh, to help us get you here. Um, I know that we're gonna do great things. I love that you prioritize equity for our students and for our community. And whenever we bring something to you, you have an instant solution or at least a let's go try it drive. And I think our parents are seeing that energy and I really respect it. Thank you. I mentioned you in my speech last night too. <laughs> she did. Yes. Not by name. Thank I said you. superstar <laughs> superintendent. <laughs> Tongue twister. Any other comments? Um, ditto what everybody else so eloquently <laughs> said that I couldn't possibly repeat, but I'm very excited to continue to work with you Thank for the you. next few years. For those at home, we heart her. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's it. Short heart. Call the roll, please. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Raver? Yes. And Mrs. Rarica? Yes. I was gonna say All right. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you. Now I will turn the rest of the employment section over to you. Oh, to thank our superintendent. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. You're the first to say it. I'm going to jump around a bit and do all the academic pieces, and then I'm going to ask the AD to come up and do all of the athletics. So we are delighted to welcome Morgan uh, Ball as a substitute teacher. We always need more subs. We have, I'd like to welcome two new educational aides, uh, Deasa Howard and Brianna King. And we um, are delighted that Stephanie Brown, who's been on a leave of absence, will be returning for next school year, which is wonderful. And we also um, welcome uh, Glenn Edwards, who's going to do a little extra marketing and community engagement for us. And I know she already has on Facebook the great testimony that our board president and also Alice uh, gave in Columbus yesterday. So uh, at this time, Alex, would you come up and uh, let's read through all the various coaches and pupil personnel contracts. Thank you. The athletic department would like to present the following names. Derek Alsip for spring weight room, Joel Ward for baseball varsity assistant, Larry Parker for varsity track boys, Chris Kelch for the winter weight room, Patrick Manley, softball varsity assistant, Don Jackson, boys varsity tennis. Aaron Chenault, varsity football coordinator. Thank you. Peyton Williams, varsity football coordinator. And Adam Reynolds from varsity football assistant to eighth grade football. And I would also like, I was remiss, I forgot Christian uh, Compton, who is going to be a student assistant at aid. So welcome to Norwood City Schools. Can I get a motion for the adoption of our employment decisions? I'll motion. I'll second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Raver? Yes. Mrs. Rarica? Yes. All right, moving on, we have the policy committee report. Ms. Debbie Cole? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, tonight we have 14 policies for your consideration. Um, these policies are listed on our website so the public can view them. They're right on the um, our homepage. If you go under the Board of Education, there's a link that says um, policies uh, under consideration, so you can look for these there. Included are these in the policy uh, updates. We have slight changes to the agenda format and the wellness program updates to the treasurer's duties and donation updates, uh, approval of Title I programming that we review each year, 
um, a few policies that have changes to cross-referencing, and finally our graduation requirements um, are updated to reflect the state's uh, current standards, and those will apply to next year's seniors. So I'd like to motion to approve the first reading of the new policies and revisions of policies and regulations listed on the agenda. Can this be the second reading? Didn't we do the first last week? No, this is the first board action, so this will be the first, the first reading. So I have a motion on the table. I'll second it. We have a second. Is there any discussion? I just have one thing. I just want to remind the public that we're not approving these adoptions tonight. This is just the first reading. So if you're concerned about policy work within the district, uh, feel free to go onto our website, find these policies, read them. If there are any questions or concerns, you have the next month to reach out to any of the board members, uh, you know, ask those questions or bring up those concerns and that way we have a chance at our next committee meeting to bring those to the table, um, deal with them before the second reading and the adoption of these policy changes. So I just wanted to make that clarification. Any other discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Atwood. Yes. Mrs. Cole. Yes. Ms. Ballard. Yes. Mrs. Raper. Yes. Mrs. Rerica. Yes. Fantastic. Moving on, we have section six, which is the building and grounds committee report. Ms. Amber Ballard. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, so this one is a continuation off of last week's discussion about donating the play set that's at Allison Street School. Um, it's in pretty good shape. Unfortunately, if someone were to take it down and rebuild it, there could be some question of insurance coverage in that. So we have not dismantled it to reuse anywhere else. Um, but we would love to make sure that that has a good home. So if you have a community member in need or an organization, a church, um, a, a community center, anybody that might be looking for a, a free play set that can communicate with their insurance company to make sure that those needs can be met, to make sure that it is safe and, and covered when it is rebuilt, um, we would be very happy to donate it to you at no charge on behalf of the school because we don't want it going to waste. Um, we are going to be donating the slide to the city of Norwood to place somewhere else here in the community for one that was damaged, but the entire rest of the set is completely up for grabs. Please reach out to us if you have a contact that might be interested in this set. Um, and we are just voting to make sure that we have agreed consent so that when someone does reach out to us, we can go ahead with that and honor it and not have to wait another month to approve that donation. So I would like to motion that we approve donation of the Allison Street playset. Any second? second? Okay. Any other discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Atwood. Yes. Mrs. Cole. Yes. Ms. Ballard. Yes. Mrs. Raver. Yes. Mrs. Rarica. Yes. All right, and moving right along, we're at section seven, which is the finance committee report. Ms. Sally Raver. Point two. Pass that baton to Ms. Campos. I will fix that on the agenda for next time. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Our, I'm happy to say our fiscal audit for last year, fiscal year 19, is finished, and the audit is available on our website under Treasurer's Office and then Financial Audits. We were given a clean audit with just a few recommendations, mostly concerning board policy. State auditors started on our audit October 8th and just finished a week or so ago. During that time, they had read-only access to all of our fiscal software, digital copies of checks, purchase orders, payroll, and all other reports for the year at their disposal. Despite the months of access to our records, they were only able to make a few suggestions and found no areas of concern to cite us with. I would like to stay, thank my staff, Heather, Laura, and Bridget, that worked so hard on our internal controls, taking my thoughts and turning them into workable procedures for our staff to use. I'd also like to thank Heather and the building secretaries and our athletic secretary for their work guiding and teaching staff to properly use, uh, complete their fiscal duties. This is a team effort and lots of work, but our taxpayers and our community deserve a clean audit. So I'm happy to present them with that. On the agenda 7.01, our financial reports are attached for your review and approval this evening, including the Sharpsburg change order spreadsheet. 7.02, 
appropriation re resolution, which is just the budget for the current year. 7.03 electric supply contract, which is a very good rate for three years. 7.04 comprehensive substitute solutions as a our sub contract for next year for teachers will be continuing the same manner as we are now. 7.05 Hamilton County Developmental Disability Services Agreement for next year. 7.06 inventory disposals. That's the rear the routine periodic inventory disposals. And 7.07 .07, finally donations a nice thousand dollar donation from Emerson Charitable Trust to benefit the high school. And that is all I have for finance. Can I have a motion for the approval of our financial items 7.01 through 7.07? .07? All motion. All second. Any discussion? I do have one thing that I want to say. You know, I, I know that um, our treasurer brought up the fact that we have a clean audit. And this is another year in a row where we've had a clean audit. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's not a light thing to say. I mean, that, that's, it is very difficult, especially when the state auditor's office is basically in your business for almost half the year yes. trying to find something that they could you know put down as 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 a checkbox yep. on their sheet and they couldn't find that with mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. i mean you know all that they could bring is, is just a couple of items where they wanted to tweak some of our policy language which is incredibly minor mm -hmm. so you know i just think it's a testament to our administration and our staff mm -hmm. the importance we take on the financial side to make sure that we're providing a, a, a clean bill of health to our residents in our community. Right. So thank you very much for that. You're welcome. So any other comments for discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Raper? Yes. Mrs. Rarica? Yes. All right, the next section is our public comment section, but since no one has presented anything to speak to us about, we can move right on to board announcements. So does any board members have anything that they would like to share? Um, I was super proud of you two last night. That's what I want to share. <laughs> I listened Thanks. for seven hours of testimony I know you guys sat through it, but I listened to seven hours of state testimony about Ed Choice last night. And, and Brandon, your numbers were so on point. You spoke so eloquently for our district. And you and Candace both had such heart for our students and for our parents that I was just blown away. I stepped away from work, took my break when you guys went on just so I could listen dedicatedly to what you had to say. I was so impressed and so proud of you. Thank you for doing what you did. So following our testimony, um, one of the committee members that was on there um, kind of followed us out into the hallway and thanked uh -oh. us for giving our testimony. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> and and so, so the, the comment that was made to us was that we brought something to the committee that they've not heard before. So everybody's talking about change needs to be made but nobody's telling them exactly why it needs to be made. It just, you know, the report card system is, is failing. It's just not representative. But nobody gave them something actionable to, to work on. And that's something that we did is we actually gave them a concise example of this is one of the examples of why this whole thing is wrong. Mm -hmm. And that was an eye opener for a number of committee members and you're talking about the graduation impact for our deferred students correct mm -hmm. they yes. were unaware of that mm -hmm. yes <clears throat> completely unaware of that and even even one member who you know in previous testimony to that I thought was kind of leaning the other way and then questioned you on and then the after that he was you, you could kind of see the light bulb come on that was mm -hmm. like oh and you know if you get a chance to go back I think you could pick that person out mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I did listen on in the evening, and I think you may have inspired a couple other folks to mention something similar. They said, I think we heard earlier somebody mentioned graduation. We have deferred students, too. So it was almost like they oh, added good. it back in. We did have a couple more Because we were in our cars people. driving home. 
Um, yeah. So, I mean, like I said, I was at work, so I listened. I had the, my little earbud in, and I was listening, and I think you guys inspired a couple other districts to be like, oh, oh yeah, wait a minute. We had deferred students. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, that they really made a point to say, you know, one student can make such a difference. I believe it was actually Bridget Kelly, our representative, um, who spoke with uh, Mimi, who's the superintendent at St. Bernard, Saint Bernard and mm -hmm. Elmwood Place, was also there. She didn't go on until about 11 at that oh, night. Yeah. Okay. Um, and her graduation rate is, you know, similarly impacted by her students. 1.4% mm -hmm. impact per student of her rate. And so I think you guys mentioning that, uh, they had time to talk and make sure that that was mentioned in Mimi's statement as well. So, you know, districts our size are so much more impacted by I, yes, every we are. student. We are. I mean, that's, I mean, that's the primary <clears throat> reason why the high school finds itself where it finds itself. Yes. And it's a very simple fix. All this, the, the House and Senate has to do is just accurately define how our students graduate from the districts. Exactly. We're not asking them to do anything weird or off mm -hmm. the wall. We're just asking them to accurately depict what occurs within the state. Give right. credit where credit's due. Right. These exactly. kids did their duty and they should not be counted as dropouts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. exactly. uh, anywhere, ever. Right. So, so anyways, it, it, was, it, was an interesting, um, it was an interesting event. Trying to get in and out of the state house, if you've ever been there, the, the place is a maze. So and beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had a parent from Finley, Ohio, um, email me that I saw today. I know, right? She says I was tuning in to the channel to see um, people from Finley talk, and I just happened to turn it on right when you were talking, and and she said some really nice things about what we had said. I wrote her back, I said, this this is very, um, I can't believe it, that a stranger would seek us out. Like, how would she even know? I mean, I guess, her, I mean, our names were not even on the thing. How would she know how Your to find? Your names were on the yeah, name. Oh, they were? Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Our names were on there. Yeah. Okay. So, um, <laughs> I know, and I've watched it, too. I guess I didn't pay that much attention. But... Um, yeah, she looked us up and mm -hmm. she wrote me to say thank you for what we had said. That's great. And she lives in Finley, Ohio. I was really impressed. Mm -hmm. so, so one other thing, I just want to make an announcement. And this is something that I fielded quite a bit today. So I had a number of people reach out to me and ask me specifically if the district was going open enrollment. And so you know, obviously my answer is no, we're, we're not open enrollment, we're not going to open enrollment. Um, but, you know, I had to ask myself, why are people bringing this up right now? They mentioned and it several times last night. It was night. mentioned a lot a by lot. other people. So, yeah. so I, I think what's happening is this whole ed choice debate, I think some individuals are getting ed choice confused with open enrollment. Yeah. Mm, maybe well, so. You also have, have to think about, and nobody brought it up last night, I was really hoping somebody would, that no public schools are on the ed choice list. So you can't even point. opt to go to a better mm -hmm. public that's school option. Um, even if it's an open enrolled district, that's not part of the deal. Right. Um, so you can't send funds to another public institution. And then you also have the, you know, you still have to maintain transportation costs and all that, even if another district public school would provide public transportation, those kind of things, you would think that might be easier for folks to set up, but it's not even an option. And no one mentioned it. And, and that still kind of irks me that we can't mm -hmm. even include our very successful public schools in the state of Ohio on such a list. Um, and then you also have the, the debate of, you know, well, if I want to send my kid here, because these, he's a third grader and now we have to pay for all of the schools. No one mentioned the fact of a compromise to say, well, maybe that building. If your other buildings are not on that list, then we shouldn't, as a district, be required to pay for any more than that building. So if your elementary is on the list, we only cover your elementary voucher, not you know, 12 years of vouchers, or if only True. your high school is yeah. on it, et cetera. There's no SBA one mentioned. SBA 9 takes the buildings off, though, so that's right. probably why they didn't but it, talk it about it. But it wasn't mentioned, and I know some people were mentioning fixes or suggestions or compromises, like they want solutions. That could be an easy one to say, well, you shouldn't put your public schools up for, you know, a potential 12 years of investment, millions of dollars for one student, 
because one building might have been on the list for one or two years and then come off of it, or all of your other buildings are doing phenomenally and it doesn't matter. So I feel like that's doing a disservice to the buildings who are meeting and exceeding those state standards. So, so just to clarify, for anybody watching or listening, our district is not open enrollment. There's, there are no plans in the near future for us to go open enrollment. Um, however, it will remain to be seen how Ed Choice is going to play out. So that conference committee is going to make a suggestion. I would say sooner rather than later because there are a lot of people that want this thing to have some resolution before the April 1st deadline. Um, but, uh, but I think they have a lot of internal deliberation within themselves on, on how they want to handle this. So, so keep messaging your representatives. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The fight Don't isn't stop. over. Yeah, the fight isn't over. You can be watching right now. I turned it on before I left. Tonight's yeah. the last night. Tonight is the last night, and I would imagine they're going to go to 3 a.m. again. Holy moly. Yeah. All right, we're going to move on to the superintendent's report. My report is I would like to thank the board members and parents who went to Columbus to testify for what is right for our district and for our students. And uh, to let you know, we did get a response from Governor DeWine's office thanking us for, because we did send the resolution that the board passed to his office. Okay. Moving on, we have the Great Oaks report with Ms. Linda Ballard. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, so on February 12th, we had our first meeting of the new assignments for our groups we're each signed to a committee every year we get those assignments in january but we don't officially meet in those new groups until february and fittingly since i'm on buildings and grounds here i'm also on the buildings and grounds equivalent committee there um, so we are still talking construction lots of stuff is is going on right now laurel is moving along with their updates um, we have cleared some uh, grounds that we recently acquired uh, we have finished our bids and we are beginning the next phase of construction up at Laurel. Um, so we are expected to fill out our new foundation for additional building space in the, in the next few weeks. Um, our graduation dates in May were set for our different four campuses from May 11th, 12th, and 14th. Um, and then we also, we established a new award in honor of two of our members that we lost last year, uh, Mr. Spar and Ms. Steele. And we uh, will be awarding that to Ron Friend, who is from Fairfield Local Schools. Um, he'll be the first recipient of that award presented at this spring conference for OSBA. And that concludes my report. Fantastic. Lots of good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, next is the Norwood Community Television Board Report, and that is myself. So a um, couple of things I want to mention. Number one, I, I think the Norwood Community Television did a fantastic job uh, with both girls and boys basketball that they filmed during the season. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is I don't know if everybody had a chance to view it, but Donna Lake, in conjunction with NCT and Tyler Meyer, put together a submission for um, Hometown Takeover. Yes. So this is an oh, HGTV oh. thing. I'm familiar with HGTV. <laughs> yes. so, so they're looking for a, a, a small urban hometown, and they have a number of criteria. And I tell you, Norwood checks every box on the list. And so Donna and Tyler Meyer put together at, at the last moment this fantastic video and then they didn't realize but then they had to get releases from everybody that was in the video <laughs> oh. so they were running around trying to get releases they had it uploaded for submission it was due at midnight on whatever day and it was 11 47. <laughs> holy moly but well school board was represented i was there you were there yes. yeah yes you in were. the park it that would great. be so exciting if nora would got that oh. i tell if you, you haven't if, seen it it's everywhere if you it's haven't seen the video Norwood's it's, strong, it's, it's you have to watch it. It is really good. It's about three minutes long. It, it is very, very well done. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, I hope that they submit it for a blue chip award. And for those who don't know what a blue chip award is, it's it's, it's the public access version of of was it the Emmys, yeah. the Oscars? Yeah. Yeah. So it's exciting. Yeah. For us. All right, and that concludes the Norwood Community Television Board Report. 
Um, I'm going to move on to the OSBA legislative liaison report, but I think, can we combine that with the other legislative report, just do them both at the same time? Oh, right. I yeah. mean, five and seven. We've, we've said the things. So, you know, the House is debating whether or not they should keep SB9 and replace it with SB89. Big difference being in how it's uh, they would fund those Ed Choice vouchers. Oh, and they want to change the name to Buckeye Opportunity Program or something like that. Yeah, the guy from the Buckeye Institute, I think, was was like, let's just change the name. Right. So maybe people so. will forget about it. I'm not sure, but let's not be fooled by that. Oh we won't, and you shouldn't either. Um, <laughs> but at SB 89. Um, takes more of the burden off of public schools uh, paying for these vouchers, which that part is crazy to so me. So SB is Senate bill, and that one already passed. Oh, right. It's now in the House, so it is HB, and they're trying to... I think it's to... the other way around, but yeah. yeah. It, it, yeah. It's but very SB confusing. and HB are House bill and Senate bill, so... Yeah. yeah. HB 9... <laughs> we public school people would like to not have that one because it, it doesn't take the burden off of the schools enough. Whereas SB 89 does um, and takes all the buildings just off the list. There won't be a list. It goes to an income-based system versus a performance base that is linked to the report card that is flawed so that they can redo that structure right and personally i just don't think there should be report cards it should be a little narratives because it's it's not a measure okay. it, it shouldn't be it's it's silliness so but anyway so uh there's a lot of testimony going on at the um state house right now and brandon and i went and also let's also give kudos to parent uh, Norwood City Schools parent Candace Winterbauer, who also went with us. Um, and if this ever happens again, which it will, <laughs> please, everybody, Brandon and I and Candace know how to work this now, and they need all hands on deck to show up and give some testimony. You don't have to say a bunch of fancy things, you can just say, I support public schools and here's why and what you're doing is wrong because of this you know it doesn't have to be some big thing everybody can support and everybody can play a part um, to help do it so right now we'll wait and see uh, what they do about that fantastic oh I guess also um, well, maybe you'll say it for avenues for success. So, yeah. How about the funding? No. That's like a legislative thing. So oh, no. every oh. year they threaten to cut after school uh, money from, from fed federal funds. And so we all, and you all in the public, we all need to make a big stink about don't cut our after school. And so you call our congressman, Brad Winstrup, and also our senators, Sherrod Brown and Rob Portman, about that one. Okay, thank you very much. Moving on for the avenues for success report, Sally Raber. Thank you. Uh, we currently have 38 NHS students enrolled in the Young Entrepreneur Institute program. Um, they are going to receive a series of five lessons in the Career Avenues program. Then um, they'll each come up with a pitch. There will be a local pitch contest on March 25th. Um, and they're currently securing judges from the local business community to um, judge that. NCT will assist by videographing the students. And then um, each pitch is about 90 seconds in duration. And then the videos are submitted for both um, a regional and a state um, young, young Entrepreneur Institute competition, which is exciting. Um, Mr. Robinson gave um, a list of students to assist with um, their alternate pathway to graduation. Two of the students have been working hard in the Career Avenues program to acquire those hours. Our hope um, that some of the other students will take advantage of this program. They can receive volunteer hours uh, in the following ways. They can volunteer in the elementary programs, or they can be a peer support in the um, middle school, high school, Welcome to My World program, or they can volunteer uh, in the Drake Planetarium. 
Um, also, the elementary students tryouts with the Squash Academy ended last week. Uh, we had eight students try out, one of whom was invited to join. I'm very proud of all the students who tried out. Uh, Mr. Tim Munchen did a great job assisting our students and working with the staff of the Cincinnati Squash Academy. Um, and then we've just finished up an intensive 11 week reading and math program administered by the Tri-State Foundation in all the elementary programs. We will share the gains once all the data is collected and analyzed. And that concludes my report. All right, fantastic. Uh, we have no executive session for tonight. So we're going to move on to approval of future meetings. Our next committee meeting is going to be March 10th, 2020, the Board of Education office at 2132 Williams Avenue. And then our regular board meeting will be the following week, March 19th, 2020, here at the High School Mini Auditorium. Um, can I get a motion for the approval of these future meetings? A motion. I'll second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Raver? Yes. Mrs. Rarica? Yes. All right. I would like to motion that we adjourn. One second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Raver? Yes. Mrs. Rarica? Yes. And we are adjourned. Thank you all. <laughs>